Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on Facebook tonight. We are so glad to have each and every one of you with us as we begin this study tonight on the mysteries of God. And I am so glad to have each of you here. I hope that you learned something tonight. And it was so good last week after the Bible study that you guys asked us to keep it going. That just thrilled my heart to know that you're enjoying these studies. And we are just so glad to have you join us tonight for this one, The Mystery of the Begats. As you know, Godspeed Ministry travels to different tracks. We're spread out in two countries in the Canada and the USA and just taking the gospel everywhere. Make sure that you make your comments and your questions below as we get in to this study tonight, because it is our desire to help you understand and know God and who he truly is. So we are glad to have you with us tonight. And before we get into this, I always like asking God to teach because he knows <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the teacher and we need him to help us in this study tonight to reveal not just the word and the meaning, but the revelation of God himself in it and through it. So let's just pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for writing everything down in a book, recording everything, instructing us, teaching us your ways, helping us get to know you. And Father, we know that you are the most pur purposeful, intentional being. You do not waste a nanosecond. And everything you do is planned and precise. So Father, teach us tonight as we go through this lesson of the mystery of the begats, and reveal to us your majesty, your splendor, your glory. In the name and the power of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. It is so good to have you here tonight. And I just want to ask you, hey, Greg, I see you're out there. I'm glad to see you here tonight. And he says, hello to everyone. But I want to ask you, do you know how you were named? Do you know who chose your name? Um, my mom's been having some health issues. We've been going back and forth to the doctor a good bit. And I, one time I just asked her, I said, Mom, where did the name Renee come from? And she said, your grandmother picked it out, her mom. I said, really? She said, yeah. I said, okay. And I knew that whenever I got into first grade, that my first grade teacher told me that my parents were stupid and did not know how to spell my name because it was not spelled the traditional way. And that was the first impact I really thought of my name having an impact on me and even on others and what it said to someone else. So tonight I have a few names that I would like to share with each of you. Let me get back over here so I can share my screen. And I want to share with you what my name means, and then also some of the ones that usually are on the study with us. I've picked out some of your names that have been here. As you can see, my name means born again. I think that is awesome. So have you ever thought about what it means whenever you reach out to your hand to someone and you say, hello, my name is Greg Parker or Renee Bingham. Have you ever thought about what you're saying to that person? God did. He really, truly did. So my name is, is Renee and it means born again. Some of the other people that we usually have on here is Chick. He goes, his real name is Charles, but he, he goes by Chick. So when you look up Charles, it comes to mean manly, especially someone, I'm, I'm farmer, very manly in that way. Greg, did you know that your name means vigilant and watchful? And I think that's very appropriate for you. I can see you being a vigilant watcher, especially over the track there at Galat. I love that. 
And then there is Tammy, uh, one of our chaplains here at Godspeed. She's usually in here with us, but her name is Hebrew, and it means a spice, maybe from the palm tree. So I think that is quite interesting. How about any of you to see, um, hi, Mike. He was, oh, Mike was named after Michael the Archangel. Yes, absolutely. How cool is that? So my, some of us do know exactly what our names mean, and others have never searched it out. But God is very intentional in naming people in scripture. Our scripture tonight, if you saw the introduction, you know that we are going to be talking about the mystery of the begats. And with the introduction, I mean the video I put out earlier this afternoon talking about the mystery and this amazing God that we serve. So I'm going to read the begats that we probably all hate to read, but I want you to hear this and don't go to sleep, don't tune out because you've got to wait for the good stuff. All right, Matthew chapter one, and I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. I'm going to be reading one through 17. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now here we go with the begats. And forgive me, I am, I do not know Hebrew. I love Hebrew, but I'm not good at the pronunciations. So bear with me. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Phares and Zara of Tamar. And Phares begat Ezram and Ezram begat Aram. And Aram begat Abinadab, and Abinadab begat Nathan, and Nathan begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of, of Rachel, of, yes, of, well, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah. And Solomon begat Rehoboam, and Rehoboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa. And Asa begat Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias. And Ozias begat Jotham, and Jotham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias. And Ezekiel begat Manassas, and Manassas began, begat Amon, and Amon begat Josias. And Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jehoiakim begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zeroboam. Zerobabal. And Zerobabal begat Abiahud. And Abiahud begat Eli Eliakim, and Eliakim, lost my place, begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliud, and Eliud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Matham, and Matham begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And the carrying away from Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. There are three sets of 14 here in this scripture. Three sets of generations. Now, I'm going to go through because there's these sets of names, and I am going to share with you the name, what those names meant, just like I shared with us what our names meant. And I want you to see as I share the name and then the meaning, if you can begin to put together the message. 
So let's go back and let's start with God because God created Adam. And God, of course, means the God. Adam means man because he was formed of the dust of the earth. Seth, his son, means is appointed. Enosh, the son of Seth, means a mortal man. And Kenan, the son of Enosh, means sorrow is born. Can you imagine naming your kid sorrow was born? Bless his heart, but God has a purpose. Mahalalel means the glory of God. He is the son of Kenan, of whom sorrow was born. Mahalalel has a son named Jared, and his name means shall come down. Then Jared gave birth to Enoch, and Enoch means instructing that. And then Enoch gave birth to Methuselah. And remember, Enoch was caught up. And Methuselah is the oldest man who ever lived. So Enoch means instructing. Methuselah means his death shall bring. Wonder what it was that the death of Methuselah brought. It was the beginning of the time when Noah was building the ark. And then Lamech. Enoch's Methuselah son means those in despair. Some of these names, I just, you have to wonder, how did it feel walking around knowing that your name meant those in despair? Was he a person of despair? I don't know. But then Noah means comfort and rest. Now, I want to share my screen with you again and see if I can make this I want you whoops let me share my screen before I make it big so I can get there all right I want to share my screen with you again and I want us to read these names together you can see here let me make it a little bit bigger Look at these names. You can see God, Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. But here, if you read on the right their meanings, you will see that the God man is appointed. A mortal man of sorrow is born. Think about that. The God man is appointed. Even from the very beginning of creation, God had names already picked out, and he is already talking about his son. The God-man is Jesus. He is appointed a man, a mortal man of sorrow is born. We think about those songs. Then down at Mahalel, it says, the glory of God shall come down. Is that not Jesus again? Instructing that his death, whose death? Jesus shall bring those in despair comfort and rest. <laughs> Woo! I love this. This just absolutely amazes me that we can have this message in these Hebrew names. God intentionally named every single person. Do you remember that when John the Baptist was born, Zachariah, his father, was a priest, and everyone knew that the firstborn child was always, always named after the father. And it came to be the lot of Zachariah that it was his turn to serve in the temple. And while he was in there ministering to God inside the Holy of Holies, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. And told him that his son was to be called John. And Zechariah said something wondering why. And the angel told him that he would be mute until he named his son John. And when he came out from that day until he named his son, who was months away from being born, he was mute 
could not say a word. And everyone knew that he had had a major encounter with God. So here we see that names are very important. And if we go back to that photo that I was just showing you, share my screen again, that here, the God man, Jesus Christ is appointed a mortal man of sorrow is born. The glory of God shall come down, instructing that his death shall bring those in despair, comfort, and rest. That's the names from God, Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Lamech, and Noah. Each one of those names in Hebrew tells the future. And we haven't even gotten to where, well, I guess with Noah we have, where man is so corrupt that God was sorry he had made man upon the earth. I'm going to share with you something here as well that you may not agree with, and, and that's fine. This is a personal unction, revelation to me. It says that in the days of open the Jesus Christ returns, it shall be as it was in the days of Noah. And while we're talking about these names, God also does things with numbers. Six is the number of a man. Two is the, God always puts the number two on anything that he's declaring is a faithful witness. So six we know is, is Man was created on the sixth day. But six not only means man, it can mean the beastly part of man. And by the time we get to Noah in all of these names, we see that man has degenerated so far from God in just 14 generations that they now basically have lost all hope of redemption. God finds Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives, and he puts them upon an ark with two of all the unclean animals and seven of all the clean animals. And he sends the flood. So six is the number of men, and, and in Revelation, it says, as it was in the days of Noah, or excuse me, in Matthew, I think it is, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be on the earth. And if we look in Revelation, it says that the number of the beast is 666. And we've been looking for all these different things, but one day as I was reading and praying, and again, you don't have to agree with me, you don't have to believe this or, or share it. But I just felt like God was telling me because of how much I've seen people change in my generation. We've gone from being respectful, honorable, courteous, using please and thank you and yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. We could leave our doors unlocked. We have gone from that place to where now, at times, I don't feel safe going out into the streets. There's rioting. There are so many deaths, drive-by shootings. It, it's just crazy how far our society has fallen just in my lifetime, just in the few decades I've been alive. So here we see that Man is going to degenerate into the three sixes. Six, six, six. Beastly, beastly, beastly. And that's the number of the beast. But it is, is it also the fact that just as in Noah's day, man has de is degenerating. It took 14 generations from Adam and Eve walking with God 
to God regretting he'd even made man. So is man going to be so beastly that God again is sorry that he made us? Scripture says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns upon the earth. Again, just a thought. All right, we've chased that rabbit, added a little value, gave you something to think about. But again, think about Noah and Adam, just 14 generations going from someone who walked in the cool of the evening, whom God came down to earth to walk with and the talk with to discuss the things of earth and now at noah god is purging the earth of all men and starting over with noah now let's pick back up here and we're going to go on from noah and we are let's see whoops get back over here the next generations we are going to go from Shem the one of the three sons of Noah and Shem was the most spiritual of the three sons and it says the Shem's name means fame he gave birth to Arphadax and that means Babylon's fortress Canaan means Sorrow, Shayla means extend like a plant, as someone who spreads out. Think about a strawberry plant or think about plants that just put down roots everywhere. Then Shayla gave birth to Eber and Eber means someone beyond the place, someone who's on the move. Peleg, he means division and his name Peleg took place at the Tower of Babel. And that's where the division came down and God divided mankind who were all one skin color, all one language. But because Nimrod wanted to take over and build up to God, look at this. We're just one, two, three, four, five, six generations. There's already somebody trying to be like God again. Do you see how insidious the nature of sinful man, of evil within us can be? And that we have to be on our guard, but thank God for Jesus and the Holy Spirit living in us. So we have great hope because of that. So here Peleg means division at the Tower of Babel. Peleg gave birth to Rua, which means friend. Rua gave birth to Sereg means branches out. Again, remember that um, Shayla was extend like a plant. So again, this is somebody branching out and Nahor means enraged and his son Tara means fury. And as you know, Tara is going to be the father of Abraham. And Tara is also an idol maker and a seller of idols. So look again, we've gone from the first four generations, the four, first 14 generations from Adam to Noah. And God is sorry that he makes man. And now he's got Ma Noah, a good man. But look at the 14 generations. We're down to Tara, who is an idol worshiper, an idol maker, and an idol seller. So let's look, if we were to take these 14 generations, whoops, I forgot to share my screen with you. Hold on a second. All right, let's share the screen. And again, let's read this one. Sham means the fame of, but let's go to our message. The fame of Babylon's for fortress and sorrow extend like a plant beyond the place of division. A friend also branches out, enraged with fury. You see, again, God is showing the things that 
are going to happen. He he talks about the fame of Babylon's fortress and the sorrow that it brings, but yet like Nimrod, Nimrod hunted man. He actually hunted men and sought to bring them into his division. So he, the place of Babylon, which was Nimrod's place, extended like sorrow. That sorrow extended like a plant beyond the place of division. It went far beyond the Tower of Babel. But then look at this, a friend also branches out. Who's our friend? It's Jesus Christ, not our friend. It's God. I mean, think about this. We're about to introduce Noah. I mean, excuse me, Abraham. And Abraham is the first person in all of scripture. Maybe he's the only person in all of scripture that God calls for him. So here he's already telling us there's a lot of bad things going on in the world, but a friend also branches out enraged with fury. And that's Abraham who is going to turn back to God. You see, we've already gone through two generations of 14 generations, two 14 segment generations. God started with Adam, a perfect man, and sin took him down. But God brings Noah in, and now from Noah to Terah, the father of Abraham, we see we go from good to bad. You see, there's a cycle here. God is always showing us that no matter how far we go away from him, he is offering us hope. So again, let's read this one last time before we go to our next 14 generations. The fame of Babylon's fortress, and in quotations it says, but I will make Babylon fade away. That's our God. So the fame of Babylon's fortress and sorrow extend like a plant beyond the place of division and of course, that was the Tower of Babel. But a friend also branches out, enraged with fury. So we have now, we've seen two different ways that God is showing us messages in scripture. And I love that. I love that God is, is going to do that for us. He's bringing this to us. Now let's go on to the next 14 generations. And here we see Abram, the son of Terah, whose name was changed to Abraham. It means a glorious father. Or at first it just means a glorious father, but then Abraham means the father of a multitude. So is God not our glorious father? And is he not the father of a multitude? I, Abraham gives birth to Isaac. And we know if you've read the story of how Sarah laughed, how can a woman of my age have a child? So Isaac means laugh or laughter. And Isaac gives birth to Jacob as he outwits his enemy. And then his, Jacob's name is also changed. And this time his name is Israel which means a mighty prince who sees God. Now, I'm going to, because the author of this study, and I'll share and give you all the credit to those who made this study possible, but the author of this goes into six more generations to Levi, then joins himself. Uh, Kohath means an assembly. Amram means a glorious people. Moses, whom he rescued, because remember, Moses was rescued in that basket in the Nile River, and Gershom means stranger in a strange land, and Shabuel means captives delivered by God, and that's what Moses did. So let's read this one. Let me share it with you again. I need to be a little better at this technology, so let's share the screen here. So, whoops, let's go to the next one. All right. So Abram is a glorious father, the father of a multitude, laughs as he outwits his enemy. A mighty prince sees God, then joins himself to an assembly, a glorious people whom he rescued, a stranger in a strange land, 
captives delivered by God. Is that not us? You see what the, the message of salvation is right here as we have been reading the, the begats in scripture. God in the original language has this glorious message. So a glorious father, our father of God, the father of a multitude laughs as he outwits his enemy. And then he sends a mighty prince of God who sees God and joins himself to an assembly. This speaks of Jesus and the church. And he calls us a glorious people. If there's anything you get out of this study tonight, and it's just really what God has on my heart so much in these days, is that God, Jesus, is coming back for a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. I want to be that one. I want to be part of that. I won't be the one because I want to be part of the whole body of Christ that you out there watching with me now are. And I think that our churches, at least the ones that I have been part of, attended, and I've been in so many different churches throughout my life, but the message has been pretty much the same. The message has always been so sin conscious. There's one denomination that said you can only be, be you can only get saved once, but because they keep preaching the sin message, then you're rededicating your life every week. But you see, only until the recently, God has been having me preach this message of who we are to be. God is coming back. He is going to join himself to an assembly, a glorious people whom he rescued. We were strangers in a strange land, captives of Satan, captives of sin, delivered by our God through the mighty prince that we read about here. You see, the message of salvation has been being told if you go back and put these names together. So when we pick up our Bibles and we read Matthew chapter 1, Abraham beget Isaac and Isaac beget Jacob and all of this, what we are really saying and what we are really telling in these 17 verses is the story of salvation. The plan of God from the very beginning, before the foundations of the earth, as God says, were ever, ever done. How amazing is that? I love, I just love our God. I love the, the way he, he teaches and shows us so many things. If you guys are finding this interesting or boring, let me know in the comments. I'm not hearing much from you out there. I'm not sure. I know that Greg and Michael are here. I uh, can't really see a lot of other information as I'm trying to teach and, and do this too, but I would love to know. Are you finding this amazing? Are you seeing how detailed and planned God, uh, planned is not the right word, but how greatly he does plan? Before the foundations of the earth were ever done, God already had a purpose and a plan. And we're going to talk about this with us in the future as well. Scotty Wilson. Hey, Scotty, good to see you out there. I appreciate that. Amen. So I want you to have confidence tonight in God. I want you to see that he knows the end from the beginning. And that as we read through these names, that yes, it can get a little bit boring, but the amazement when we read his story just blows me away. So let's go on here, and I'm just going to share my screen with you again, and we will rock on through the next, I think there's six of these slides. So let's just go. All right, this is the one that we just were at. Now let's move on. Whoops, I can't get it to move. Uh, screen sharing has stopped, okay. Um, 
Let me see if I can get back over here. Here we go. Let's try this one again. All right, so now we are going to go from Solomon, from Judah to Solomon's son. Put this up here where you can see it. Judah means one who praises the Lord. Perez breaks out or breaks open a way. Hazron is an area surrounded by a wall. Ram of great height. Amenadab, O oh my people who belong to the prince. Nashan, a prophet. Simon, clothed. Boaz, strength. Obed, one who serves the Lord. Jesse, means here, David, one well-loved, and Solomon, of course, means peaceful. And Rehoboam means one who sets people free. So let's read it from the top. One who praises the Lord breaks open a way into an area surrounded by a wall of great height. Oh, my people who belong to the prince, a prophet clothed with strength, who serves the Lord is here. One well loved, peaceful, and who sets the people free. Now we move on to the fifth of our 14 generations. Abiha means my father is the Lord. Asa means healer. Jehoshaphat, one whom the Lord judged. Jehoram, whom the Lord raised up. Ahaziah, the Lord took hold. Joash, the Lord is strong. Look at this. This is all names of God here. Um, Amaziah, mighty is the Lord. Uzziah, or Azariah, means my strength and help are in the Lord. Jotham, talks about the Lord is perfect. Ahaz, I took hold of. And Hezekiah, the strength of the Lord. And Manasseh, it made me forget my misery. So let's read it from the top of the meaning. The father is the Lord, talking about God, the healer of whom he, the Lord judged and whom the Lord raised up. The Lord took hold of me and the Lord is strong. Mighty is the Lord. My strength and help are in the Lord. The Lord is perfect. I took hold of the strength of the Lord. It made me forget my misery. You know, these names on the left are so hard to pronounce. They're just not in my wheelhouse. They're not names we hear today. But I love the message. My father, my God, my father God is the Lord. The very first way that he introduced himself after telling Moses, I am that I am. He also said, I am the God who heals you. So my father is the Lord, the healer of him whom the Lord judged and whom the Lord raised up. Again, we're talking about Jesus here as well. The father is the Lord. He's the healer of him, Jesus, whom the Lord judged. Remember, all the sin of the world was placed upon the spotless lamb, the son of God. And the Lord raised him up from dead. Then it says, the Lord took hold of me. The Lord is strong, mighty is the Lord. My strength and help are in the Lord. The Lord is perfect. So I took hold of the strength of the Lord. It made me forget my misery. I don't know about you, but that right there, I need, I need to be reminded of how great God is. How about you? Do you need that reminder so that in this day when things are as crazy as they are, not only in America, but all across the world, do you need this encouragement, this word of what God is showing us here? I hope so. I know I do. All right, let's go to part six. And this is Amon means master builder, Josiah, the Lord healeth, Jehoiakim, the Lord raises up, jo Jokaniah, the Lord upholds, Coniah did uphold, Jehoiakim will uphold, 
Xiao Tio, I have asked God, Padei, the ransomed of the Lord, and Zerubbabel, exiles in Babylon. So let's read this one out. Truly I am the master builder whom the Lord healed, whom the Lord raised up, whom the Lord upholds, did uphold, and will uphold. I have asked God about the ransomed of the Lord, the exiles who are in Babylon. You see, during this time, the people of Israel were captives. And God was letting them know when you, when they told their genealogy, God was telling them, I am the master builder. I am the God who heals, the God who raises up, the one who upholds, did uphold, and will uphold. So when the prophets could say, I have asked God about the ransomed of the Lord, the exiles who are in Babylon. I don't know what you're facing today, but God wants you to, wants you to know through these names, just as he did to the people of Israel, that he sees where you are. He has a purpose and a plan, and he will bring us through. I'm just going to share some words with you. I've really been digging into people who have words, of, prophetic words about this time that we are in. And it's so crazy. I'm hearing it from secular people who study the Dead Sea Scrolls and ancient scriptures, even though they are not Christian. And they told about this time. They've known about it for about 10 to 20 years now. But then I also go back to those men and women whom I trust and walk with God. And they are all telling us that they see this time coming. They saw it. God gave them forewarning. But he also said that this is not the end. In fact, I think it was Bob Jones who said that he, back in the 90s, I believe it was, it's on YouTube if you want to research it, but he saw 20, 2000, 2010, 2020, 2030, 2040, 2050. And they all said that we will pass through this time and things will get good again. But there's always a message here that God, when in our ebbs and flow of life, there is a rhythm to this world. And while we are in bad times now and we need to be prepared, we don't need to be discouraged. God will bring us through. God is watching over us. And that's why I wanted to share this message of the mystery of the begats with you tonight. Right now, I just want to encourage the saints of God because things are topsy-turvy in our world right now. They're chaotic. And I'm encouraging me just as I'm encouraging you. So I hope this is helping. Now let's go on to part seven. It means to a, a beahood to Jesus. So a beahood means my father is glorious. Eliakim, my God will rise up. Azor, helper. Zadok, the just one. Akim, the Lord will raise up. Eliahud, my God is my praise. Eleazar, God will help. Mathan, may the gift. Jacob means just Jacob, and Joseph means increase, especially in greatness. Emmanuel, for God is with us, and Jesus Christ, the Messiah and Savior, and of course, Jesus came to give birth to us, the church, those called out of exile, out of Babylon, out of the world. Babylon stands for the world. Church means it Ecclesia, the called out one. So let's read this last of these tenets here today. My father is glorious. My God will raise up a helper. Who is that? Jesus. He's the just one. The Lord will raise up. There's no one more just than Jesus. My God is my praise. God will help. May the gift of Jacob increase in greatness. For God is with us, the Messiah and Savior of those who are called out 
of Babylon who are called out of this world. Hallelujah. Wow. If we were to go back and read all seven of these together, you would see the entire message and basically the Old Testament to Jesus in the names of the genealogy. So when we pick up our Bibles and we go back and we read here, those begats what we are actually reading is the history of God's plan and purpose and such great encouragement. And I just want you to see that there is one more. This one, if you take the first letter of every one of the names, it has another message for us. God doesn't do anything by accident. In fact, in Hebrew, there is no word for coincidence. So if you take the names from Adam all the way to Tara, it says, I will forgive my enemies showing compassion. Praise God. Forgiving those made from dust a second time. You see, God took from Adam all the way to Tara, the father of Abraham. And he says, I'm going to forgive my enemies and I'm going to forgive those made from dust a second time. Remember, there's Noah in here. And I believe, yes, Noah's at the top right. And God destroyed everything. But he says, I'm going to forgive those made from dust a second time. And then you'll see it a little bit further there, take, taking the two, and it's all written out in Hebrew for you. But all of this, can be found at biblecodes.org. And you can see here that this was researched by Dean Thomas Coombs, Bachelor's of Theology from Eastern Pentecostal Bible College in 1980 to 85 from Peterborough, Ontario. And you can see all of his. This study began in 1991 until 2020. He began to look into the numbers and the codes of the Bible. There are so many things that are hidden in plain sight in the scripture. But today I wanted you to see that when Jesus said that every jot and tittle, not one word will pass away, but every jot which and tittle, which are the two smallest elements of the Hebrew alphabet, or writing. Jesus said not one of those would pass away, but would be completely fulfilled. God is purposeful. You have purpose here as well. And I hope that as we have gone through this time of seeing what's hidden in scripture that you will be encouraged to know that God knows all about you too. Greg Parker says this is very, very interesting. He said, I think it's cool that there is, whoops. All right, Joy has shared there in the mess in the notes, but Greg says, I think it's cool how there is scripture hidden inside of scripture. Yes. Greg, I agree with that. I agree with that. God is so intentional and he wants to make sure that we get this message from him. And do you know that next week we are going to go into the mystery of times and places, your time and your place, because all of this is leading up to us here now. I hope you've enjoyed this study tonight. I hope it means something to you. I hope it shows you something that maybe you didn't know. I've been reading other books on the Bible code besides what uh, this gentleman has. There's a new one out. And again, it's by someone who's secular. But they now have found that the first five books of the Bible 
Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Written in Hebrew, they actually believe now, these scientists, researchers, archaeologists, all of these people looking for answers, they now believe that the first five books called the Torah, which is what God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai, is the code, the blueprint for the universe from the moment that God created till the very end. It's all contained right here in the word of God. How amazing. Does this make you want to get in here and study? Study to show yourself approved, a workman rightly dividing the word of God? Does this make you want to read and pray for comprehension? Does it make you want to do some digging on your own? There is a wealth, a wealth of truth and knowledge available to us in the words of scripture. So again, thank you for joining us here tonight. We are so grateful to have you with us. We appreciate your faithfulness and consistency with us. And next week we will be talking about the mystery of your time and your place. And hopefully you will see part of your purpose and plan. Maybe you've wondered, why am I here? Just like the book, that The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. And so many people have written because people are always wondering, why am I here? Maybe next week we'll give you some insight into that. I just want to tell you that we are so grateful for each of you. If there's some prayer requests that you have that you'd like to message to us, you can call us, you can message us here on Facebook. If you want to put it down in the comments, you're more than welcome to here. But we pray for you because that's what God's laid on our heart. We want to disciple you to help you walk into the fullness of everything God has for you. We want you to be part of that glorious church, one who is God's, Jesus's equal, his helpmate, not God, but scripture says that he is coming back for that glorious church. And Jesus said greater things you shall do than what he did. I believe part of my purpose is to help you achieve your purpose. So join us next week. Make sure that you join us this Sunday for church service at four, or you can go back through and see any of the videos on our Facebook page. Greg says, thank you so much for this weekly study. I look forward to every Tuesday evening just for this. Greg, you're awesome. We certainly appreciate your interaction, and we hope that you will share. Tell other people, share what you're learning here, or share this video, give it a thumbs up, tell us what you like. And also, if there's something you would like for us to do a study on in the fall, September or whatever, if there's something you've been wondering about, let us know. We'd be more than happy to look into it and share it with you. Thank you again for joining us tonight. God bless each and every one of you. Hope to see you this Sunday at four and next Tuesday right here as we go back to the mystery of your time and place. Godspeed, friends. Let's close with prayer. Father, we thank you for your magnificent word, for your superb planning and execution. And Father, no matter how tumultuous our world becomes, we can rest knowing that you, are pl you have planned, you have it written out, and that nothing happens that catches you off guard. You know the end from the beginning. You put us here for a such a time and place. Help us, Father, to glorify you in it. Now, I pray peace over my brothers and sisters. I pray for a peace that passes understanding. I pray for a power of peace that eradicates chaos and fear so that they rest and they glorify you 
in the knowledge that you are their father, that you have a good plan according to Jeremiah 29, 11. You know the plans you have for us. And Father, it's written in your word right there in the begats. Thank you, Father. Bless these people. May they prosper in knowing you. May they be in health and prosper even as their soul prospers. Their soul, their mind, their will, and their emotions. May they be in peace, happy and filled with joy. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of sharing this time. Thank you, Father, that they have given this time to you. Bless them, Father. Keep them safe. Fill them with health, joy, and righteousness. For your glory, Father, through the name and the power of Jesus, our Lord, who gives us the right to come before you, we give you praise, honor, and thanks. Amen and amen. All right, folks, thank you so much. It's great to have you. See you next week right here again. The mystery of time and place. Godspeed. <laughs>